second collection is for the Peters Pets. We hear about Moses and the people have just been freed from Israel. I mean from Egypt. And they're going out in the desert. And right off, after God does this huge, wonderful miracle of saving them from slavery, they do the stupidest thing. They adore a calf. Where I come from, California, a lot of dairies. And cows and calves are dirty, they eat grass, and here they said, you're the one that brought us out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt. No, how ridiculous, how low we can go to, to so quickly forget what God can do and go adore a golden calf that the Egyptians had taught them about. But Moses says to God, God says, I'm gonna destroy these people, they're so, so uh, unfaithful, so quickly, so ungrateful. And so we see in there God's justice. God is very just. It's wrong. He did all this to slay, save them from slavery, to give them a new life, and they go and adore a stupid, grass-eating calf. But Moses comes in and he's like, no, have mercy on them, have mercy on them. And God is merciful. So we always see God as just and merciful. Then we hear about Paul and he talks about, I was the worst of sinners, yet God in his grace helped me. The gospel is all about sinners. The word for sin is not a good thing or sinner. It's not a like, oh, you're great, you're a sinner. But in today's world, sinners seem to be the best thing. I mean, it's, first off, people don't want to talk about sin. Sin is offenses against God. Sin is a bad thing. Being a sinner is not a good thing. Now, so we hear about the lost sheep. I was thinking about when you're poor and you have a hundred sheep, or even if you aren't that poor and you have a hundred sheep, one sheep still has a lot of value. It does, one sheep. And I go to Mexico all the time and work with the poor, and there, one sheep has a lot of value. Or one calf or something, this one coin has a lot of value. What does it say? Even though sinners are doing bad things, they have great value. And God cares about every one of us. And he wants to save what is of great value. So Jesus came for one reason, to save sinners. That doesn't mean we say, okay, I just stay in my sin because it's what many people today think. I'm a sinner. Jesus came to save sinners. I'm just going to stay in my sins. I like sinning. Or I won't call it sin. I'll call it, it's all right. Everybody does it today. That's what I'm used to doing. I like it. It's not sin. I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe the church that it's sin. I can do what I want. I'm not a sinner. How can you be saved if you don't recognize what is sin? So you can be saved by Jesus' mercy and love comes to save sinners. As you see, talks about, I have come for those who have repented. Repentance. That's an important concept. And we look about the, um, the young man who takes his father's uh, goods, goes off, lives a life of sin. Talks about prostitution. But he repents. What does it mean? He's aware that sin isn't leading him anywhere. Now maybe you can say, I don't believe in sin. But just look at your life when you don't obey God's rules. It doesn't lead any good place. It doesn't. It doesn't get you anywhere. 
In fact, it gets you to a bad place, especially drama. And so then, he saw how bad things were. And he loses everything, so then he goes and puts himself as a uh, hired worker to the devil. That's the devil. Giving up everything. Here he had wonderful life with his father and freedom and dignity. And he sells himself off to work for the devil. That's what sin does. When we do one mortal sin, we're giving ourselves over to the devil. And the devil doesn't give you good food to eat. He didn't even get to eat what the pigs were eating. But then he reflected. And this is where we need to do today. Reflect in our lives. Is whatever I'm doing, is it good for me? Does it give me freedom? Does it give me peace? Is it good for the people around me? So we really like this, the prodigal son. He at least was smart enough to reflect. Every one of us have to make choices all the time. Are we going to reflect and make good choices? Jesus is extending mercy to sinners. He comes and dies for sinners. That's why we see him on the cross. I love you. I die for you. But there has to be the repentance. And how important it is to go to confession. That's the thing. Get up. I'm not happy here in my sin. I'm going to get up and go to my father's house in the confessional. One thing I want to really talk about that really is uh, hurting my soul very much is people commit mortal sins and then they go to communion. Sometimes it's because they're embarrassed, they don't want someone to know that they're in sin and they don't stand, or they think, well, I, there's nothing wrong, or someone told them, oh, just make a little act of contrition and then you can go receive Jesus in Holy Communion. That's a lie. That's wrong. We never, ever go to Holy Communion without confessing a mortal sin first. But when you do go to confession, again, many people come in, Father, these are my sins. Da, 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 da. I don't hear any repentance. It's like, I want to go to communion. I want to get this confessed and I want to go. No. you got to be sorry for the sin. And you feel so much better walking out of the confessional if you were really, really sorry for your sins. Anyway, going once you commit one mortal sin, the devil comes in your soul. You give yourself into slavery to the devil. Your soul becomes ugly. Saint Therese, uh, Saint Teresa of Avila said, "Your soul becomes dark and full of monsters and ugly." And it's like this. I don't think any of you would like if I took you and put you in a septic tank full of poop, huh? You would not like me very much anymore. And then I come around and, hi, how are you? You know, oh, you're not going to. Taking the Holy Eucharist and receiving Jesus when we have a mortal sin is doing that to God, to this merciful, loving God that does so much for us dies on the cross, gives us the nature and beauty and love and everything, and then we subject him to that horrible yuck in our soul just because I don't, I don't, I believe I have a right to go to communion, I'm going to go, or someone might think something bad about me because I'm afraid with other people. Never, ever go to communion. And if you ever have, beg Jesus' forgiveness for offending him and forcing him into your soul full of sin. If we have any love for Jesus, and that's why we're all here, because we love Him, we appreciate Him, we're thankful for Him. We should never, because of human respect or because someone has told us a false teaching, subject poor Jesus to come into our soul. But confession is such a wonderful thing to go, to get back with the Father to feel his forgiveness when he says, I forgive you, you are valuable. Put back on the great clothing of grace. Come in, 
come back home.